reproduction is the primary function of the male reproduction system. It takes place in the testes starting the puberty, 12 to 16 years of age, and keeping until old age. Sir, what happens after a sperm is produced? The sperm develops to maturity within the epididymis, a long, narrow coil duct that attaches to each testis. The epididymis stores mature sperm in its stretch farthest from the testis. When males sexually arouse, sperm is propelled by contraction of muscle tissue through thick-walled ciliated ducts, vas deferens. The sperm is mixed with the carried-in fluids secreted by certain accessory glands to produce semen. The fluid-secreting glands include seminal vesicles, bulbourethral glands, and prostate glands. Contraction of the muscle of the prostate glands aid in the release of semen outside the body through the urethra. But sir, urine passes also through the urethra, right? Yes, urine also passes through the urethra, but it can be blocked when the prostate gland contracts, closing the outlet coming from the urinary bladder. The penis is the male organ for sexual intercourse, function to transfer sperm. It is made up of specialized tissues rich in blood vessels. Sir, you mentioned that the male has reproductive organs inside and outside of the pelvis. Is it the same for us females? No. Unlike the male, the human female has a reproductive system located entirely in her pelvis. A female's internal reproductive organs are the vagina, uterus, oviducts, and ovaries. The female reproductive system is adapted to produce eggs, receive the penis and sperm, and incubate the embryo during the pregnancy. The ovaries are considered the primary sex organs since they produce eggs and secrete hormones. They occur in pairs and are about the size and shape of almonds, which is enclosed in a nourishing cell called follicle. The oviducts, also known as the uterine tubes or fallopian tubes, are long, narrow structures that conduct the secondary oocyte from the ovary to the uterus. Normally, the second oocyte and the sperm meet in the oviduct. The narrow neck of the uterus is called the cervix. It secretes mucus that helps the sperm to enter the uterus and prevent bacterial infection. The vagina is a thin-walled muscular tube that receives the penis during the sexual intercourse. It also serves as a birth canal and passageway for menstrual flow. But sir, if the vagina, uterus, Fallopian tubes and ovaries make up the female's internal reproductive organ. What are its external parts? The external sex organs of females are the clitoris and the vulva. The clitoris is a small, erectile structure which is the center of sexual stimulation. The vulva consists of a tissue with inner and outer folds. Oh sir! We learned in our study of the cell cycle that male primary germ cells undergo division. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. That has something to do with reproduction too, right? Yes, sperm production is the primary function of the male reproductive system. The sperm are the male reproductive cells or gametes. The formation of sperm or spermatogenesis occurs in the seminiferous tubules of the testes. The developing sperm cells attach to and get nutrients from the Sertoli cells, which are also found in the seminiferous tubules. The inner wall of these long tubules contain diploid cells called spermatogonia, which give rise to sperm cells. Testosterone, follicle-stimulating hormone, 
and luteinizing hormone regulate spermatogenesis. A spermatogonia undergoes mitosis and is forced away from the wall to the hollow interior of the seminiferous tubules. The resulting daughter cells called primary spermatocytes undergo further division through meiosis. At the end of the meiosis one, the daughter cells formed are haploid and referred to as the secondary spermatocytes. Their division is incomplete because the cytoplasm has yet to divide. Secondary spermatocytes undergo meiosis II and produce daughter cells referred to as spermatids. One primary spermatocyte, which carries 46 chromosomes, produces four spermatids, each containing 23 chromosomes only. At later stages in their development, the spermatids become flagellated sperm. Sir, how long does it take for a sperm to form? It normally takes 9 to 10 weeks for a sperm to form. But sir, you told us that when semen is released, it has around 400 million sperm cells. Are secondary oocytes as many as those sperm cells when they meet in the oviduct? Of course not. One of the amazing things about the female reproductive system is that it only produces one secondary oocyte per month that has the potential beginnings of a new human being if and only if fertilized by a viable sperm. A baby girl is born with around 2 million primary oocytes. But by the time she is 7 years old, most of her primary oocytes have been reabsorbed by her body, leaving only about 300,000. Starting at puberty, where there is appropriate stimulation from hormones, a primary oocyte undergoes oogenesis, the production for secondary oocyte. The secondary oocyte is then released from the events in the menstrual cycle. A cycle of physiological changes in the female reproductive structures that repeats about every 28 days. The menstrual cycle is regulated by hormones and can be divided into four stages. Follicle stage, ovulation, corpus luteum stage, and menstruation. Sir, what happens when a sperm and a secondary oocyte meet in the oviduct? The nuclei of the sperm and the ovum fuse together to form the zygote. This is called fertilization. A single ejaculation of semen during the sexual intercourse can release about 150 to 350 million sperm. But only 300 to 400 sperm can reach the upper part of the oviduct within an arm. Contractions along the tract can help them move up the female reproductive tract. If the sperm arrive one to two days before after the ovulation, fertilization can occur. In the oviduct, sperm surrounds the oocyte, but only one sperm penetrates and fertilizes it. Sir, pregnancy begins at the moment of fertilization and ends when the child is born. Right. Pregnancy begins from the moment of fertilization and then proceeds to embryonic stage from week 3 to 8 and fetal stage from week 9 onwards. It ends when the child is delivered through labor. Childbirth is brought about by strong, regular contractions of the uterine muscles. This painful condition is called labor, which is caused by a decreased progesterone level coupled with increased estrogen level in the mother's blood. Sir, you mentioned that during pregnancy, the muscles in the cervix expand to accommodate the growing baby. That's right. Labor also involves the expansion of the cervix and loosening of the pelvis to accommodate the head of the fetus through the vagina. Expansion of the cervix usually takes 8 to 12 hours. When full expansion is reached, the amniotic sac ruptures and expels the fluids 
that it contains. The umbilical cord is clamped and cut. The baby begins to breathe air on its own through the lungs within moments after complete delivery. Does it not hurt the baby? No. There are no nerves running on the tissues of the umbilical cord. So, cutting is not painful. The remaining tissue on the baby's abdomen eventually dries up, tightens, and leaves a scar called the belly button or the navel. The newborn baby will grow and become an adult, and someday, he will have a child of his own. And that will be a start of another cycle of human development. Very good, guys. Development is a continuous process. It begins before birth and lasts until old age. The end of the menstrual cycle is called menopause, which is a natural part of aging. Infancy is a period for two weeks to one or two years, the time when language is acquired. After infancy, the baby becomes a child. Yes, childhood begins after infancy to about 10 to 12 years. It is a period of steady growth in size and strength. The child learns to use and coordinate small and large muscles of the hands and legs for different tasks. The child also begins to interact with others through the language. Important social, emotional, and mental changes occur during childhood. And when the child enters puberty, that's when he turns into an adult. Yes, the period of transition from childhood to adulthood is called adolescence. The most dramatic changes occur during the ages 13 to 19 years. These changes start during puberty, the stage when sex hormones increase and secondary sexual characteristics begin to appear. Adolescents experience growth spurts in terms of height and weight. As a person ages, the tissues become difficult to maintain because they repair slowly. That's why people in their old age must be extra careful and really take care of themselves. You know, in my old age, I still want to be physically and mentally healthy. Aging individuals can still be physically and mentally alert if they live a healthy lifestyle. Thanks, sir. We sure did learn a lot from you today. No problem, Pimple Kid. Just kidding. Because of reproductive organs, your body is programmed to change as you grow and age. It's easy to feel embarrassed when you start getting signals that your body is giving you new responsibilities. That's why it's important for teens to have all their questions answered by their parents. It's the parents' responsibility to provide their teens with appropriate education. It means teens should be taught to take responsibility to protect themselves from unplanned pregnancy and sexually transmitted diseases and the consequence of rapid population growth. But if you feel awkward talking with your parents, you can always ask your doctor, a school nurse, a teacher, or some other adult you feel comfortable talking with. Like me! Just visit me here in K-Hub and I'll listen to you. Bye, K-Hubbers! See you later! Bye.